Zarina Muhammad. Uh, I'm an artist, researcher and educator. Um, I think I've often described my practice as a multi-headed hydra. I, I mean, I also identify as embodying that composite feature um, because I do enjoy sort of thinking about um, polyphonic ways in which one can think, uh, feel, sense about any given topic or idea or issue. So, um, you know, as much as possible, a lot of my work also takes on um, thinking about the different tangents and constellations of some of the ideas that I'm working with. So I'm interested in um, approaching um, any body of work that I do um, in, a, in a way that destabilizes the voice of the single storyteller um, to also enable a, a, a broader way in which we think about um, thinking about an idea or a narrative, um, also presenting you know, multiple possibilities in which we can make meaning and draw also from um, multiple systems of knowledge, which I think is very important. What I do enjoy is, I mean, at least this, this definitely corresponds to my way of working. Um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm an artist who is not only attached to very fixed outcomes, I'm very open to um, serendipity, any forms of spontaneity or um, intuitive impulses that could inform the work or just help to propel it forward. Um, so I think that sort of sense of playfulness, um, that, some, that sense of um, also, approaching whatever, whatever curi curiosities I might have at any given moment with a certain degree of um, playfulness and recognition that it's fine to allow it to be durational if needed. I mean, I definitely also enjoy um, working with others. Um, I enjoy the collaborative aspects of, um, of working with, with ideas or, or with storytelling. Um, so I feel like that's definitely been a, a very key aspect of my practice in the last decade or so. Um, I feel like the past year, for me individually, but also I'm, I'm understanding it and sensing it quite collectively, has been the space in which a lot of us have been um, quite compelled, whether willingly or not, um, to relearn, unlearn, um, I guess, certain ways in which we have sort of how the world speaks to us. I mean, I think a question that I've often been asking myself um, in the last 20 months is really, you know, uh, how is the world speaking to me, to us today? How do we make sense of, you know, what might be happening which we may not fully understand or we may not even be able to articulate in a language um, that that is coherent or clear? And I have been quite consciously uh, sort of really assess certain things about, you know, what does it mean to val value uh, the work that we do? Um, how can we also, um, you know, redistribute resources? To apply um, this particular year, um, I mean, to some extent, it was also the gentle nudging of um, people around me. Um, but I suppose I was also doing a bit of a stock take. I mean, I think I was already in that sort of headspace of um, evaluating and also looking back at some of the past um, 10 years, but I suppose more specifically five years. Um, and you know, what worked, what didn't work, what do I need to do better? Um, and you know, how have certain also points of say failure um, helped to um, sort of inform, I suppose, or, or assist in, in also helping me to rethink and learn certain things. I feel like applying for the prize at this point um, in my mind was perhaps a, a way in which I could also um, get some critical feedback or assessment of um, the various projects that I've been working on in the long term and you know hopefully maybe uh, offer a, a new perspective which I had not thought of before. I feel like the being awarded this prize has been a very kind, very generous affirmation um, of the long term uh, research brace practice and project um, that I've been pursuing for the last 12 years, um, looking to specific uh, sort of issues and narratives, myths uh, related to Southeast Asia. I think for guess for me, um, you know, this this prize will also assist in, in supporting um, some of these projects that are, are still ongoing um, and which also will involve um, local, regional and international collaborators. So I'm, I'm looking forward to also um, working collaboratively with, um, uh, you know, invited uh, scholars, researchers, historians, um, biodiversity specialists, heritage specialists, 
um, scientists, you know, individuals who also can sort of, again, create that um, more polyphonic space in which we can, you know, um, think about, about um, some of these ideas. When I'm thinking about uh, what advice I might give, because sometimes advice can be unsolicited and that can be a bit um, irksome. Um, but when I'm thinking of what advice I might give to a, a younger artist like this, I'm also thinking of um, the younger me. I'm also thinking of um, the many young, wonderful young artists that I'm meeting, um, you know, uh, who are my students. Um, I mean, I do think that in an island city state like Singapore, right, it's, it's very, it's, it can be quite easy to tie one's worth and value. Um, artistic or otherwise to, to, to your productivity. Um, I, I think that is actually one of the biggest lessons to unlearn or conditioning. As artists, how do we unlearn um, certain things, um, certain um, sort of, again, it could be educational baggage um, that we've, or, or whatever baggage that we might inherit as people. Um, and how does that also sort of filter into the work that we do?